Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think it's time for scripture reading. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to our Good Friday service. For those of you who are new to church or for those of you who are new to Christianity, we just want to let you know that Good Friday is a day where we remember the greatest day in history when Jesus died on the cross. Today is more somber than any other service that we have throughout the year. We don't glory the violence of the day, but we glory in the one who showed his love through the sacrifice of dying on the cross for us. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day and this time that we could have to remember the most important and significant moment in the history of the world. Lord, we just pray that you will make this moment real in our lives today, in our hearts today. Help us, Lord, to bring our lives and our hearts to you completely, Lord. We thank you and we just pray that you will receive glory as we remember in Jesus name amen I think everyone here has been through a situation where you have been through dark days of suffering right and many people who have been able to work on themselves can look back to that time and say I am stronger because of that situation I am more assertive today because of that situation today. I am more mature today because of that situation, that suffering. Suffering can bring us to a brighter place in life. Joseph from the Bible, he had been trafficked by his brothers because they were jealous of him. He had been accused of sexual assault when he turned down the sexual advances of his boss. He was assumed dead by his family because they hadn't heard of him for decades. And when he had the opportunity to confront his brothers for what they did, he said, 
what you meant for evil, God, say, God used for the saving of many lives. And I think many of you can relate to suffering being used for your own good. It never went to waste. If you're going through it right now, God never wastes your suffering. If you've been through it before, but you don't know it yet, God never wastes your suffering. It is used to make us stronger. Today, we're here on Good Friday to remember a day filled with much suffering. We're here to remember a day when a man called the suffering servant went through unjust punishment. We're here to remember the one who was called the man of sorrows. We're here to remember his suffering. But unlike the suffering that we go through, which is unexpected many times, his suffering was intentional. His suffering was planned out. It was actually prophesied about years before he went through it. The suffering this man went through was to bring the salvation of many over the history of humanity. The suffering of this person happened so you wouldn't have to suffer through eternal separation from God, so that we wouldn't have to suffer through the punishment of sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And the name of this suffering servant is Jesus. This man is like no ordinary man. This man is 100% man, human, but also 100% God. This man went through something so great so that you and I could have a bright tomorrow. Today, we're going to have a, I could be saying it wrong, tenebre, tenebre (laughs) style service. The word tenebre means shadows. And tenebre services have been used since the early church as a way of remembering the journey Jesus took to the cross. There are seven shadows representing each of the events, different events that happened on and leading up to Good Friday. And this is what the candles each represent. At each stage, there will be a scripture read from someone in the congregation, and then a candle will be extinguished by a time of silence. This will continue for each of the stages until the final candle is out, which will be followed by an extended time of silence that you can use for your own reflection. How does this apply to you? Picturing, envisioning what happened as you listen to the scriptures too. And then we will conclude our time with the cross ceremony. So let us begin our tenebre service and walk through the scriptures. I'm going to invite Liberty to share with us the shadow of betrayal. The shadow of betrayal. Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, verse 20 to 25. It, when it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the 12 disciples. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? He replied, one of you who has just eaten from this bowl w- with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die as the scriptures declared long ago. But how, terrible it w- but how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It will be far better for that man if he, would, if he had never been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, you have said it yourself. Thank you, Liberty. 
we're going to have, you can turn the lights down actually, Pastor Matthew. This is a dark, somber service, so it reminds us of the shadow of death that Jesus walked through. So today we're having the lights out. I'm going to call up uh, Cassidy, who is going to share with us a scripture, the shadow of agony. The shadow of our inner agony. Accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Let's take a moment of silence. Lola and Menelik will read the scripture passage, The Shadow of Loneliness. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40 to 45. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch me with, with, even with one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing but to the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went, to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, go ahead and sleep, you've had your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Have a moment of silence. Jan will read with us the shadow of desertion. The Shadow of Desertion from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, and also the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. As Jesus was saying this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived, and a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. 
You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and he gave him a kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the, light, in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. And after a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. And then after an hour later, someone else insisted, this must be one of them because he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And suddenly the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. Let's have a moment of silence. You will have faith, come and read, for the shadow of accusation. The shadow of accusation, Matthew 26, verse 59 to 67. Inside, the leading priest and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, Aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, Well, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, You have said it, and in the future you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show him to show his horror and said, blasphemy, why do we need other witnesses? You have heard all his blasphemy. Why do you verdict? Guilty, they, said, they shouted, he deserves to die. They began to spit in Jesus's face and beat him with their fist and some slapped him, jeering, prophesy to us, you Messiah who hit you that time. Have a moment of silence. We will have Muriel read for the shadow of humiliation. The Shadow of Humiliation, Matthew 27, 27 to 44. Some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the, their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. 
They stripe him and put him in scarlet robe on him. They wove thrown branches into a crown and put it on. They spit on him and put the, in his head. And they place a red strike in his right hand and scripture. They then they knelt before him, mockery and taunted, yell, king of Jews, and they spit on him and grabbed the stick and stuck him in his head when it. When they are finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put on clothes on him again. Then they lay him away and crucify. Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, and the soldier forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to the place called Goloth, Golotha, which means place of skull. The soldiers gave him wine mixed with bitter girl, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him in the cross, the soldier grabbed to his clothes and threw, threw in dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fasting above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. The people passing by shouting, abuse, shaking their head in mockery. Look at you now. They yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are a son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers, the religious law, and the elder also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and he will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even one of the revolutionaries who was crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. Let's have a moment of silence. going to have Aria come up and help me with this reading here. But the criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Let's have an extended time of silence. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, 
Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what had taken place, they beat their chest and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, they stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. We're going to have Darlene come and share a beautiful poem she's written on the cross. Um, before I begin, I just want to say that Matthew had asked me to write this for a staff event around the Incarnation uh, a few years ago, but I want to say that I think the Holy Spirit wrote this because it wrote itself. It was, there was no work involved, <laughs> okay? It's called Down to This. Veiled in flesh, how can it be? My Savior lived to die for me. Down to this from heaven's throne, he chose to live among his own. He chose to feel all our pain. He chose to suffer for our gain. Glory and power laid aside, he came to free his captured bride. Garments soiled, ratty hair, beauty marred by Satan's glare. Such a sight, such a shame, lost amid this cosmic game. Used, abused, tortured, chained. Inside she screams, let freedom reign. Heeding her cries, he leads her yet, out of shame, fear, regret. Fire by night, cloud by day, his presence guides her in his way. The journey's long, the route's unknown. She fights the lure to return alone to Egypt's fair. He holds her hand, he calls her name, whispers, courage, child, be unafraid. Though raped and ravaged, beaten, bruised, my image scarcely seen in you, my healing salve will I spread on your battered body, your bludgeoned head. My word restores, my word renews, my word rebuilds the ancient roots. My lacerations were not in vain. The blood I shed removes your stain. You're dressed in robes of purity, cleansed for the whole world to see. My favor rests upon your brow, my royal bride to whom they'll bow. Adorned in robes of many colors, redeemed by grace above all others, betrothed to me and me alone, spotless to stand before my throne. Amen, amen, amen. The power of sin and death has been lifted by Jesus' death on the cross. But we continue to struggle at times with sin that so easily entangles. It reminds me of the pandemic we're all experiencing now. Right now, we're seeing COVID mandates lift. Mask mandates are lifting. Testing mandates are lifting. Vaccine passport mandates are lifted. Yet COVID continues to be present. So it's still our duty to protect ourselves, but now we know how to handle it. Vaccines, antivirals, rest, quarantine, and so on. But it remains there until the day we find a cure to completely extinguish it. COVID is like sin. A cure has been found, which is Jesus' death on the cross. And one day, he promises to extinguish sin altogether, completely. 
The mandate of sin separating us from God the Father has been lifted by Jesus, and it's, us for, it's, it's there for us for the taking. We now have freedom to be in relationship with God the Father again through Christ, but we're still living in a world exposed to the virus of sin until it is fully extinguished. 